to order, please. Um, I had the first on the agenda of the budget committee election of chairman and vice chairman. And the normal process would be that the town manager would open the meeting and ask for nominations for the chair, and then we would elect the chair, and then that the chair would then take nominations for vice chair. But since um, Jim isn't here this week, um, if you wouldn't mind postponing it one more week, so we can do it in the regular process. So um, uh, Dan and I will persevere for one more week. <laughs> we'll carry on. We'll carry on. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we have the town budget today, and I'm going to turn it over to Lori if she wants to go ahead and um, provide. We had a presentation for the highway department. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to hold off on the highway at this stage and wait for Bill Sargent to come. He had a medical appointment and wasn't exactly sure when he was going to. Be here, so I would like to jump to another budget under Public Works. Um, probably Steve, since he's here to cover the transfer station, that way he can okay. depart when he's uh, when he's done. And can you tell us your name? I'm sorry, I don't. Steve know. Bean. Okay, Steve Bean. My husband knows you, but I don't because I don't go to. Well. <laughs> I know uh -huh. he does. <laughs> Um, do you want like an overview or just a, like what were the questions that you had? Probably an overview, what are some of the major changes and okay. maybe some of the goals and how they're presented in the budget and then go okay. over the questions. Um, so far, the um, it's uh, been a really good year so far and we're looking forward to a lot of the stuff carrying over in the next year. Um, the, uh, the, the markets have been really well, really good this year, as far as the recycling plastics, paper, and cardboard. Um, so you can see where on the revenue side, I project that. Um, can you tell us where you're at on this? On your. I'm just in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> in in the handout that you gave us last. Last week. Last week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the transfer station revolving fund. Okay. So the revenues on this page here. Yeah, we can, if you want, you've all got the, we can go through this in the order of these sheets. That might make more sense. We can go over the three, um, the few changes that I was. There's, there's also a summary sheet in the one I just handed out last week. It's for the transfer station revolving fund 11. It's it just kind of summarized what you're going to sell the individual sheets are in the big thick package that handed out last week. Okay, well, let us figure out where that is. Yeah, we're. Do you have that? Can you hold yours up again? I don't see anybody who brought the thick package from last week, so. I have it, I have it here. Yeah. This here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's the summary sheet for the transfer station. Uh, but in the thick package, there's some... Um, I'm not talking about the budget now. Okay. So there was this packet that had to do with contents. I didn't get to go through and explain it yeah. last week. So um, it tells you that the transfer station is paid in 100 times before. Yeah. That's where he's looking at and has the piece before. That's the budgeted narrative. Yeah, budget narrative, and then has the salaries. That's what we're going to do now. Okay. If everybody's looking at that, I can go through it on page by page. It might make more sense. It's also summarized on the one page Excel for This one right here? Yeah. Okay. This is the general fund, so let's see. Oh, a transfer station revolving fund. Yep. Is that it? Okay. Yes, exactly. I might have it in backwards. I think I do. I might be in the front. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Yeah, probably, um, yeah, we'll discuss this in order, I mean, instead of me bouncing around. Um, 
first part was the three places I thought we could um, that we needed to tweak a little bit for the budget part of it was the, uh, the data processing line. Um, we started taking credit cards uh, a couple of years ago and we're starting to see a lot more usage of them. So therefore there's more credit card user fees. And it's not a lot of money, it's $380 more. Um, I'm predicting that'll um, cover the cost of the uh, so these are these are charged by the cost the credit card yeah, cost. By the credit card. So can't you just add like a, a a dollar fee for anyone that wants to use credit card? Are we had talked about that. Um, I had I tried to explain. I was talking to Doug about it. Um, it's already pretty logistically time consuming to use a card to begin with. Okay. So now if I have to explain to someone uh, every time they come with a card, are you going to use a card? It's going to be three percent more. And then I got to get on the calculator. Instead of the mattress being twenty dollars, it's going to be twenty-one dollars and thirty-two cents. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to be very, very, very time-consuming, and uh, no other businesses do that. No stores don't do it. Restaurants don't do it. Um, but I just think it'd be very difficult to. Um, you spend so much time explaining it and going through the math with every transaction. It would just be a lot. Town office actually does. Um, if you want to pay your sewer, oh, right, like the, your yeah. taxes. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, they yeah. Tack yeah. It on. They tack it on. Yeah. yeah. Maybe signage would help. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's. I mean, three hundred eighty dollars. That seems like a ton of labor to try to recapture. So the total, okay. I think, is seven hundred dollars. Um, so I know when you go into a little convenience store to buy a bottle of water, it's already prices if you're paying with credit card. Mm. Right. Maybe. Maybe so we should, maybe maybe you should stop needs. something a little bit to compensate for what you're doing. And yeah, we could increase. Uh, there's some things I want to look at to increase um, some of the charges anyway. Yeah. And most of the time, the uh, credit people use credit cards for the town bags and the demolition because those are the two higher higher dollar items. Uh, so I think I'd, yeah, I'd rather try to recapture it in the way you're suggesting. Simple. Other than to try to take ind individual transactions and go through that process over and over and over again. Yeah. Just build it into the process. Yes, that, that's what I would recommend. We can definitely do that. But your, but your cost incurred a year is, is it 380 or 700? For the, uh, the, the fees that you incurred. Yeah, it was, I was gonna have, I think it's, it was um, scheduled this year at 400 and we went, um, it didn't cover it. So uh, I was gonna go up an additional 380, so it'd be, I think it's 780. Oh. The total. Um, so it's an increase of three. Three increase. Yeah. Three. yeah. Quick question: Are there uh, are there many out of town people? And I'm not. It's not like you check people's identification. Um, but if the town, I would hate to see the town subsidize the use of other outside, you know, Lisbon, Franconia people coming and paying with credit card. Um, and again, it's not much, so I understand that part. Um, it's but. Yeah, it's been difficult since COVID, especially with all the new people in town. I mean, 10% of the people that come in have state, uh, out of state plates because they, they now have property in Littleton. Uh, you know, that's, yeah, other than checking people's ID every time, uh, that's very difficult to, to pinpoint. Uh, so, Set up so that when they swipe the credit card, it automatically adds 3% onto the bill because. Yeah. And it doesn't come to our books. That way you wouldn't penalize the guy that had cash in his pocket. Mm -hmm. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. So. I don't, like I said, we, we've been going through Square since I took over, <coughs> and that's just yeah. what I know. There's a plan to consolidate those four separate payment processors into one? No, no, that would, that would 
cause major confusion. <laughs> it's good to have it separate, and they all go to separate bank accounts and keep it straight. So what's tax collector and what's town clerk and what's transfer station, parking aid funds, everybody has their credit cards can become very confusing. Oftentimes, if your overall volume is high enough, they will reduce the percentage. So if you combine them, you may be able to get some benefit there, but I understand what you're saying about the yeah. keeping it separate has its advantages on the bookkeeping side of it, so yeah. there's that. Um, second thing I was going to, I was going to take, um, right now the heating oil budget is $400. Uh, we haven't purchased heating oil since I've been there. I think we did once, like 100 gallons back in like six years ago. Um, so I was just going to decrease that 400 down to 100. Um, not that $100, that's going to make much difference, but um, we've been getting so much heating oil, used oil, that we just, we always have a surplus every winter. And if it's super cold this year, it, that's why, because I just mentioned that. <laughs> um, so I just don't think we need to keep that that money aside for that because uh, we're just not using it. And the last thing I was gonna, uh, we definitely uh, we're getting a lot more tires, and the cost of tires are have gone up. So it's costing us more money to get rid of them. So I was gonna increase that by two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, I'm also planning on on the revenue side uh, increasing the prices on the tires as well to cover that. Three dollars for a patch of tire. I was going to go up to four, and then um, the bigger tires is a bigger problem. Like the big truck tires are exponentially more than car tires. So those are the things. Um, Who do you use? Um, the Bob's tire out of Massachusetts. There's really only a couple of companies that do it, and they're we go through the NRA, which is our broker. So they're always finding the the least. A lower price bid. There's a company called BDS. Do you to check? We've used that one before as well. We've used that before and we've used Bob's. Okay. Um, I know we, I don't know why we got rid of, got, stopped using BDS years ago, but we went to Bob's for some reason. It was yeah. probably cost. So those are the three things that I had mentioned um, when I put the budget together. Steve, on a related note, you mentioned that you're planning on going over your your fee fee rates or fees costs. Um, when was the last time that was reviewed and updated? Or um, Brian, the Brian Batno, he went through it uh, line line item at a time last year before he left, mm -hmm. and this year I kind of um, I didn't go through it that thoroughly, but I went through uh, all the trouble spots, the parts that were over budgeted, mm -hmm. the parts that were under budgeted, and. Uh, I kind of focus on changing those one night. So basically, so, usually do what you think on like a yearly basis when you do your budget or yeah, review pretty the much. budget. Yeah. Whatever the fees charge that you have to present that schedule to the selectman. Any increases? Mm -hmm. Sorry, the increase would go through there. Yeah. So it would be a. Well, we've always tried to do it the, like January one is when everything's. So I don't know how much time you guys would need. Um, what are you thinking as far as the, the fee uptick, like the bags, paper bags? I uh, know I don't want to. I think those are those are still I think um, take care of themselves and a lot of the facility. Um, I was thinking tires. I was thinking um, electronics. Electronics. I was going to bump up a little, and then the, I was toying around with the demolition. I'm not because we're getting that demolition this year, which is since since COVID has been stupid. Um, so there's a lot of money there to be captured, I think. So that's, those are the three items I was thinking. And it wouldn't be like a huge increase, but it'd be a... And just... Yeah. <laughs> are we progressing on our scale? I haven't heard anything. I, I personally have never been a fan of that, the scale idea. Um, it's. I just don't think you're ever going to get that money back. It's, the scale itself is over $100,000. Um, just the fees to maintain the two scales we have now are, are like between two and three hundred a year, just with our little floor scale, because um, they got to come in and, and uh, they got to make, maintain it and then calibrate it. Uh, I'm just just spend $100,000 to put on a scale, and then another uh, $1,000 uh, maintaining it. I just don't see when that money's coming back. 
Well, my concern is we discussed was if we were to put in a scale that it would take an 18 wheel. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and maybe in the thing, bigger picture in terms of access to it, and yeah. uh, maybe right. some outside revenue available for people who need to have the vehicle weight. Uh, uh, Did Brian talk about where to put it? Is that was well, our, our, our property is very tight. Yeah. I don't know. That's one thing we looked at. Like, you came in with it because it's kind of a horseshoe. You came in with a truckload of stuff and you weighed it. I got an attendant going over there to weigh it. And then we go take care, take care of the demolition or whatever. And he makes another loop and we weigh his truck. So the attendant's going, following him to the scale a second time. So he's going to make at least two loops, if not three, depending on what he's got, with an attendant following him around for the 10 minutes that he's there. Um, I just don't know how much sense it makes to me. I don't think we were big fans of having a scale, they're more big fans of if we were going to get one, make sure we got the oh, right. Yeah, right. Thing. Just to be right accurate, right. whatever. Because okay. of, yeah, and, and try to at least get something that was going to be the most useful. Yeah. We have to start trucking stuff out. Yeah. We can't be estimating how much you could. Right. If it's, yeah, if we're getting into, we're going to get into the trucking industry, I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah, I think that was the whole focus because a year ago we didn't know the status of like the Bethlehem right. landfill that might be maxing out and, and no expansion and if we had to track truck it north we wanted that accuracy and kind of double checking on yeah. you know what our tonnage yeah, there's was. There's still no answers there so um, we're working with a we're part of the Penny Baker Waste District um, through North Country Council uh, there's 18 towns including Littleton so we're all we're, we're all in the same boat trying to figure out what's going to uh, come down the pike. Uh, Carberry and and Berlin. I'm hearing that they're having a they're getting ready to do an expansion permit, and they don't plan on letting any more people in that's there now. So if you if you get that out of the picture, Bethlehem shuts down. Carberry's not an option. They vote Dalton down. <laughs> like Rochester, New Hampshire is the next one. And, and that would, uh, just for transportation, that'd be three or four times as much. Never mind what fees they could possibly charge. We can't go to Coventry. That's, um, it's, it's across the, uh, okay. it just makes, it's, so, it might be possible, but it's, um, it's across state lines, so that's like a whole other thing you have to try to all right. um, meet their, their different requirements. And the one that's success was supposed to be good till 2055, and now they're down to 2043. Yeah, which is probably why they don't want to take so any they're more not sure there. how many more people they want coming in. Yeah. Oh, Bill? I'm new to the process when my question is a lot of sense. But am I gathering that the, the scale we're talking about to do 18 million is so that when we ship something out, we know what it was when it left a little thin? You mean if we, if we they got around trucks. You loaded a truck and you weigh it before you yeah. send it out the door. I guess that's what it would be for if we like if we we're gonna buy our own roll off trucks and do our own transportation. You, I don't know, if there's a scale house at the uh, it's gonna get weighed before it goes to the landfill anyway. Yeah. Before it goes into the landfill. So I mean weighing it twice wouldn't make sense if that's what we're using it for. So you, uh, essentially it would be a double check on the receiving lands little scale. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean I'm sure their scales are certified as well. So. I would expect that it would be. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't really in the loop with the whole scale thing and it didn't really make a lot of sense to me, but no. I wasn't looking five years down the road either. Do you know the ballpark estimate when you might really need one? A scale? Yeah. I don't know if we ever need one, but I, you know what I mean? I'm not convinced that we do need one unless something drastically changes. If we're buying our own trucks and track the trailer and trailer and we're driving to Rochester with it, then I guess that would make sense at that point. But it's, it's incredibly hard to predict right now because everything, so many things are up in the air in the, in the landfill situation. I know in the Southern part of the state there are situations uh, sometimes in the logging community uh, when they like to weigh trucks because they're worried about being overweight. 
So they'll, they'll actually close the scales and weigh these all over. I also, there's some situations where it all the Massachusetts. And yeah, there's just another verification that, uh, you know, that this is what the low weight and the only thing changes is huge for fuel consumption all the way, just to be double sure when you get there. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't think we're going to be responsible for overweight fees in many situations. So. Uh, no. Cans kind of hold it to hold. Yeah, but yeah. but if you, if you were if you did have a situation where you're worried about being overloaded or probably you wanted to make sure you were maxing out your your load so every trip was getting rid of as much stuff as possible, then that might justify it. Yeah. So you at this point don't see a need for the scale, so I don't personally. Okay. Marge, what you said about success, that that's that, that year thing, that's based on the current footprint. Right. That's on what's coming in now that they figure it's not going to go to 2055. All right. But that area has room for... As long as they get the permits. Yeah, that's right. I mean, at least yeah. in their case, they're headed in the right direction. But I think that some of their expansions would take them up to 2055. The way they were talking, if they got the permit, that this is as far as we could go. So that's a few years out still. So, uh, I think that area up there, though, is very <laughs> receptive area, the geographic area is yeah. receptive uh, to the expansion. It's not like they headed, it's 14 miles with success points. Right. Okay, so yeah. They're not going to get there. No, I, and that's just the statistics that I heard coming out of it, that they had dropped 12 years off their lifespan from what they originally thought they would get. Yeah. But they have a lot of stuff. Yeah, there. stuff coming from Canada and everywhere else. Something about tipping fees, or the further you truck it, the less the tipping fee, and it's just it's something that's, I don't quite understand on that, but it, it makes it desirable for them to work. Are there any changes in the employee status or at the transfer station? I know we still have um, four full-timers, including myself. Um, we have two, two part-timers that are working one working 16 hours a week. I have, I have two of them working 16, but one scheduled just eight hours a week currently. Um, so I don't think we need any further staffing at this point. Okay. And the difference, Lori, of the proposed budget over last year, or over this year's approved budget for the transfer station, just so we can kind of. Well, they're asking for it to be revolving funds, so they're, you know, money in, money out, they sustain themselves with fees, but they do need a little help from taxes, and so they can get fully, uh, for last year, 2021, there was 134,857 from taxes, and so for 2022, looking at 136,041. So just a nominal increase, really, a couple thousand dollars on that, but it adds up, doesn't it? A couple thousand here. <laughs> I don't want to diminish this. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have anything else, Steve, on that? Quick question. So, you said it, it, with it being a revolving fund, mm -hmm. it, the 130 or 146? 136. Yeah. All right, 136. That doesn't necessarily come out of the taxpayer's coffers. It, it helps fill a gap, but then the fees refill the, the, that amount. He actually needs uh, 463000 to run the transfer station, but he brings in a little over 327000 in revenue fees, so he needs another 136000 from taxes to help run the transfer station. Gotcha. It's an increase of $1,184 over last year's funding. And is there a reason we don't try to get it completely from fees and not have any taxpayer dollars on it? Um, That's the goal. Some, some, towns, some towns run a facility that way, like Lancaster is more, more uh, tax dollar heavy and they have really low fees. Um, you can run it a couple different ways. You can, we're, we're, Littleton's always been kind of balanced, but we have, we try to keep the fees fairly moderate and then um, we get a small amount of tax dollars, where some towns will do, will be heavy on the fees and low on the tax dollars. Mm -hmm. 
you know, vice versa. So um, we've always run it with moderate fees and moderate um, tax impact. Is there a reason you're not shooting for zero tax impact? Um, the fees would be astronomical. Like when you, if you brought up, I'm not saying, I don't know exactly, but um, like mattress price instead of 20, it might have to be 50. The, gar the garbage bags might have to be from $3, they might have to be five. Um, you know, it's possible. you could do it, I just, the fees would be pretty high. Would we run the risk though of people putting their couches on the mm -hmm. side of the road? Oh, you know, it would increase the yeah. 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 unintended consequences would be higher yeah. amount of dumping. So that's the answer to my question. Yeah, there's a fine line here where people are going to be like, I'm not paying it, I'll find a place to put it. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you to stay yeah. on the burn. Um, the thing was $40,000 for taxpayers voted to have the burn permit. Oh, the um, burn pit closed. Closure. Is that going to happen this year or? Yep, we've, um, we've actually, we had all the, there was a bunch of ash that needed to be taken care of. So we got the ash tested. We called that to Bethlehem. Um, AB, AB excavating came in just a few weeks ago. They landscaped the area to the left of our existing site so that LDIC could get their road in there. That's all done. Um, we're waiting for the glass to get crushed. That's supposed to be coming in. They're supposed to come in before the snow flies. And then we'll take all that crushed glass and put it on the existing, um, the new the new lot. Um, and then we're keeping the burn pit open until we get an alternative for the brush. Right now we're looking at possibly like a, a used chipper, maybe going that route to do away with the burn pit altogether. Uh, but currently, the site's built, the glass needs to be crushed and moved, and then once we get an alternative for the brush, we'll get rid of the burn pit set. So that's where that is. I just want to give a big shout out to, to the transfer station guys. The place is amazingly clean. You know, you think it's a transfer station, mm -hmm. and it is clean, it's mowed. Um, Everybody we have working there now has a conscience and they really want to make it good, so <laughs> it, uh, it makes it easier. Yeah, no, it's yeah. wonderful. Very efficient, too. It's yes. always good, it's got better. Yes, yeah. If I just want your opening comments and have a, have a big thing on this, but with all the stuff that's going on with China and the stuff that we need to hear correctly or incorrectly about, why, why is the market good for recycling? Yeah, we had the whole, the whole China sort thing a couple years ago where they stopped taking stuff and the paper prices went from like $20 a ton to negative. We were actually paying to get rid of our, our paper for a while. Um, and that slowly crept up. I don't know if I don't know if the paper mills have just adjusted to it, um, but every time we sell cardboard, it's gone up $10 all summer. And it's uh, cardboard's $189 a ton. Paper went from being zero to, uh, I think it's 85 right now a ton. It's just, I think, the, I think the paper mills had to like back up the whole surplus. Um, like once, once China closed, like there was a surplus of recycled material because it wasn't going anywhere. And I think that's finally evened out and now the paper mills are needing the product again instead of being just flooded with it. Um, I think that's the, the answer for the fiber side. Um, I don't know, you know exactly, but it's been really, really good this year. The metal prices have gone up a little bit, no leveling off. <coughs> Plastic always goes with the cost of oil because it's petroleum based. And of course the cost of oil has gone up, so plastic's gone up as well. Because in the plastics industry there's a huge push for post-consumer goods recycling stuff. So yeah. the companies want to use it so, so they can put it on their so put on their label. On the labels right. that it's post-consumer yeah. um, mm. goods re recycled or we using certain percentages. So, Laurie, on the budget here, um, the projected estimated expenses, that includes the salary increase, or is that, and it also includes um, retirement, the increase on that. Everything's in here, right? Yes. Okay. So, we'll make sure. And just to point out, too, that it's actually 105000 less than the projected expenses. Right. Any 
Anything else, Steve? No, thank so. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Good job. Let you right. lead the way, and Doug. Uh, I have Bill here. Thank you, Bill. We're gonna together. We're gonna go through the highway uh, budget. I did a lot of the uh, employee side of it, and he did the, the expense lines and some work on that. Um, the admin budget kind of, I guess, ties into that. That'll come up in the discussion. Um, <laughs> Which. Um, Printouts do yeah. we need on this one? We need. Well, this should be pages 57 to 61. Yeah. Or do you have another? I'll just pick that piece. That's right. Do you want to go ahead and get the expense volume yeah. first? I don't know. Okay. I have an idea. Okay. It's all about the funders. Nothing's been in. Right. We'll go ahead and go to page 60 and go through the expense lines uh, first. I know there were some questions asked about probably coming out of some of the expense lines. Um, but basically, uh, in working with Bill on it, we basically um, kept it a level fund. I think we took one budget line and split it into two. A new, uh, new line for general supplies operations. But it's just splitting up money from a general supplies shop garage. Um, and so, so we haven't made any changes to the budget lines. basically looked at it and didn't see a need to adjust anything. We were asked to keep it flat if we could. So we looked at all the numbers and we didn't see anything that stood out or needing any particular adjustment per se. Um, I know there were some questions on professional services that was asked. Um, so I guess I can open it up for any questions on that. I, I did take the time to answer everybody's questions in writing. I apologize. It took a, quite a bit of time to put it together. And, I'm very sick. I apologize for that, but it is what it is. Um, so if you did ask questions, um, you know, I did take some time to thoughtfully answer all of them on this five-page response. So, uh, so how many, uh, I guess, full-time <laughs> uh, and part-time employees do you currently have uh, this year um, and versus last year? Okay, so that was your... We might as well go through some of these questions, sure. Doug, just because uh, it, then it gets recorded and the people... Sure. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. Um, there's uh, nine full-time positions in the highway department for the 2021 budget. Um, and then for part-time, there are two temporary full-time positions at nine months each. So that calculates to one and a half full-time equivalents. So that's for 2021. Uh, for the proposed budget, we have nine uh, positions again, but um, this, this reflects an organizational change. Um, and so uh, our mechanic position was reworked to be a fleet mechanic position. And so in setting that up as a separate uh, responsibility. It's a different function than just highway. So um, it was shifted to the Public Works Admin Administration budget. But then we're also proposing the addition of a new truck driver position. So we have nine positions proposed for 2022. And then for part-time for 22, um, we're adjusting that, the two temporary full-time positions uh, are going to maintain are going to stay in place for this winter uh, for the for 2022, which will be January through April, and then we're going to reduce down to one three-quarter position for two months beginning next winter 
have 2022-2023. So for this year, that calculates to a 0.8 full-time equivalent. <coughs> uh, going down to a related question, there was one about the, um, the temporary budget still remaining. Um, the request was $15,466. With the pro proposed addition of a full-time worker, so there was a question on that, and that's uh, so the temporary reduction was only forty percent, forty-six percent of the twenty twenty-one budget. Um, so what I wanted to explain on that is that twenty twenty-two is a transition year, where the proposed truck driver position, if approved, will be uh, filled in early summer, and so the twenty twenty-three budget will fully reflect this change. Uh, well, but where there will only be one three-quarter seasonal position, uh, winter, I didn't clarify winter position, for five months, which would be a 0.35 full-time equivalent. So hopefully that helps clarify um, what the intent is of making that transition. <coughs> so now you said we've got, or we will have nine full-time uh, employees and does that include the fleet mechanic that's moved to admin or is that that it, excludes that? It that excludes is. that. And then yeah. we've got in admin two then yourself and that individual. Yes, Bruce is here tonight. Okay, so tonight. then that would be um, so actually there is an addition um, because you've reconfigured that mechanic's Correct. position. Correct. And then you're asking a uh, approval for another truck driver position, which would be full time. Correct. Okay, so that's like two um, the reconfigured mechanic position, and, and which was pulled from the the nine full time workers or the or the that, that that category, and then an addition to the nine full time um, positions uh, that drive truck and various things, so, so there's an addition there. So it's actually two that we kind of reconfigured. One with the new position and then the reconfigured mechanics position pulled from that pool of, which right. was nine, and moved but into admin. Right, but it's not a new position. That right, it, it was an existing started. position, but you, Correct. you've regrouped it and recategorized sure. it. Sure, definitely. So you've increased an admin position by one, which Previously, there was only one yourself. Correct. That's why I figured the admin budget would come into the decision. Right, but, but there's one there, and then there's the proposed additional truck driver position. Which is the goal is to offset that with a reduction in part time. Right, because that you you're ultimately you want to go to a point three five equivalent for your um, temporary workers, where we currently have 1.5 equivalent. Correct. Okay. Um, I wrote up a pretty good section here on um, um, explaining the workload. It's not, not really changing the workload, but what's changed to warrant the addition of the full-time permanent truck driver position. Um, we've talked about the first part of that, which is the fleet mechanic position. Uh, was previously a highway mechanic and they had an assigned plow route. Um, so now that's changed and the fleet mechanic is now dedicated year round to fleet. The level of fleet maintenance has increased during 2021 as there has been more effort put out to all our departments. Uh, that's kudos to Bruce behind me here for his hard work on that. More dedicated time to fleet maintenance. So this is uh, basically increased our, uh, our efforts in that. Um, we're starting to do more large repair jobs in a house to save costs with outside vendors and repair places. Um, our light equipment uh, operator who also functions as an assistant mechanic um, has also dedicated more time to fleet maintenance as a result. So overall, I mean the town has, we have stepped up and increased our overall fleet program aimed at reducing repair costs, increasing preventative maintenance uh, across all departments. This has resulted in the assistant mechanic having less time available to light equipment operator uh, duties, 
during the spring, summer, and fall work season. Um, so, <clears throat> and, the, and another justification, my second reason for explaining the new position is uh, the change is driven by a desire to have a maintenance um, consistent work, I'm sorry, <clears throat> desire to maintain a consistent workforce throughout the year. Um, depending on the two seasonal positions, so we have two seasonal positions for two seasonal positions for two seasons to carry necessary workload for the department is a challenge. So we have to literally see if we can find people that are willing to work without benefits either for the summer cycle or the winter cycle and and it tends to be, um, and Bill can probably t add to this, it tends, lately it's tended to be older gentlemen that are maybe retired and looking for some part-time work, but there's health issues that come up with that at times. And, and so, um, so we're relying on two seasonal positions to really do um, primary duties of the department. Um, they, both will have, they both have dedicated plow routes. Um, they cover the total 10 routes that the town has. So um, I kind of want to try to move away from that and try to get less, get a more permanent position that can function in, those, uh, in that capacity and not rely on two seasonal uh, positions. <coughs> In, in those, uh, just to help you with that, Doug, in those two part-time positions, we always relied on college kids, kids just getting out of high school. Well, there's a lot more regulations on the younger kids nowadays of what they can actually perform for duties, and they're very minimal. Uh, but we used to be able to get them, and they worked great. We'd keep them for a summer, and then they'd go. We always had an additional part-time person in the winter in order to provide the services here in town. So what Doug is proposing to do is basically take those salaries that are already there and help aid them into another full-time position, which is no different workforce-wise than what, where we were at in 2011. In 2011, when we were uh, cut back three people, since then we've only recovered two of them back and we've, we've still been running shorthand. So what we would like to do, because of the increased amount of work with the fleet, and that one extra, the, the assistant mechanic doing more duties in fleet, now that's taken away from the regular duties, the in-house duties that we've got to perform. So we would like to go ahead and just not have to try to recruit young kids or old people is just let's just get another full-time person and get them back in the on the street and with a plow group. Now in the winter time we would still probably be looking for a part-time person only for the winter months and when the winter was done they would be they would be gone. And that's because we have found that the requirements of service for the town, mainly the sidewalks, with 19 miles of sidewalk that it is too much on one person and it's too hard on the equipment because that person's trying to get 19 miles of sidewalk done they, during some time during the school season they, the school takes priority so we've got to put a guy there but yet there's people on Main Street that want their businesses plowed so we have found two people in those sidewalk machines provides the service what this town actually needs so to back up, what we would do would be only hire a part-time person for the winter versus we're hiring for summer and winter now. So. Do we still, um, I can't remember the, the answer to this, um, plow for the school or is, do they do their... We don't do their parking lots, no. Okay. No, no. That's, I think they still come, they're contracting that out. Okay. I was just curious on that. Now the well, we do the sidewalks and everything else around the school. We do everything but where faculty park. Okay. Question: The River Walk um, back when that was established in, in its infancy, um, that wasn't plowed in the winter time. It was right. And kept. Now, it um, is now. Who do, so does the highway yeah, department do that? That's an additional. Yeah, but I mean that's amount that we take on. We keep right from. Uh, restaurant here all the way down to the Ken Curran Bridge. And we keep the bridges plowed off the 
the multi-purpose bridge, obviously the covered one doesn't need it, but um, we keep the paths going right, to, to the current bridge. bridge. And, yeah. Saranac Street now yeah. has new sidewalks, so that's additional. Yeah. Sidewalks. Yeah. The sidewalks that were down there before were basically unlockable to begin with, so if they didn't get loud, they didn't get loud. We didn't worry about it, but now we've just put a handsome amount of money on Saranac Street. Okay. Now that's it, it's important that we keep that River District area, Saranac Street, um, Main Street, attractive for people. Yeah. State. The Harry Brown still got a St. Rose Park one of them. Who does? St. Rose, how we run? We do, but you know, there's never been an MOA um, found where we're responsible for that. Right. There's nothing. There was an old school MOA that we had, that the town between the town and the school had, that we would do the first four rows of the parking area, okay, for school faculty. And then when the, new, the latest edition went on, came in and created more parking, it didn't, we didn't need to, but so that's the Catholic you're... Church would still call and say, you haven't plowed the parking lot, <laughs> and we've got services, and so we have just been doing it, but there is no formal MOA with the Catholic Church to plow that private parking lot. But, but, but basically the school uses yeah. the parking lot. No, they've not as much as they used to. <laughs> Maybe not, uh, not as yeah, much. Yeah, but they use it. Not nearly as much, but still they use it. Yeah. Right. But when you call the snow, you're calling it. We're doing the whole thing. But you, the snow's going to go to the back of the parking lot. Right. So you feel you're just plow plowing the first four rows, right. and then the snow is being pushed into the other property. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. Well, we're plowing the whole thing. Yeah, yeah that's how we're going to do it. And now, because if we're not, they're going to call. They've called. Yeah. I get it. We've got a special service going on. Uh, we need some salt up here. It's like, okay, well, when someone can talk to Father Marcus about this, you know. But, but obviously, that parking lot is integral to our overall parking situation. Absolutely. Sorry. Well, and I think we should, but there should be some type of formal agreement with the Catholic Church on recouping. Maybe some cost of what it costs well, to do that. Part. So I'm, I'm sure the the board will Good task part. someone <laughs> for yeah. that. Well, we'll task Steve with that. So, <laughs> Bill, we have a question. Evan. I got involved in a situation in Southern part of the state. <coughs> there is apparently a state law that says thou will not spend public funds on private property. Exactly right, sir. And the town of Nottingham, probably seventy five percent tax base, comes from their links. And quasi private roads. And they took the position years ago with Bowman, and Graham, and so forth, and just say nothing. And then somewhere along in the 70s, they stepped up, you can't do that. So they stopped it, and there was a revolt in town. There were 200 people at the selectmen meeting. So they went into executive session, came back. <coughs> status quo, well, we're going to think about it and we'll get back to you. A few years later, we'll then get them back to us, but uh, another board member, we can't do this. Well, Nottingham this last year, and all of the camp roads, there was a, a taxpayer revolt in there. They got all accepted as town roads. And so, this <coughs> situation with the Catholic Church, even though it may not be quote, legal, might be something that maybe our vision should be a little blurry about. <laughs> it, it has been, because um, just because the school has used that parking lot yeah. back and forth, it's, you know, it, they've had an arrangement. But now with the additional parking lots around the school, they're not, it is a less yeah. ball. Although when you have a high school graduation, yes. and, and you have other special events or whatever, it, it certainly is you. And I think also it's actually part of our downtown Littleton parking strategy. And should not the town maybe offer to buy it from the Catholic Church? And uh, yeah. official that it's our property? Well, we're, but I think I think there's an exchange or whatever. That's it's because, because they, I, I think they, they exchange a handshake and they the law, Steve. Mm -hmm. This law is you can't expend public 
no, 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 on private property, and that's right. essentially what we're doing. Right, other than we're <laughs> doing the trade or taking the time. So there should be an, well, maybe that's something that the board well needs away. to think yeah. about. It's not up to us. It's not up to us as the budget committee, right. but up to the, the board, but that is something to consider. I think what you're pointing out right now, though, is the additional sidewalks and roads well, yeah. and parking yeah, areas. It's, it's, it's increased a lot. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. Any other questions on positions or? I, uh, service level and a uh, question mm -hmm. on um, does this staffing, would this staffing allow for the Main Street at least to be, for the sidewalks to be completely clear? Well, um, historically, in historically, when, yeah, as storms come in, I mean, obviously when you get a working storm, then our, you know, we will we get to what we can. But yeah, it, it will, and actually it'll keep our staffing level pretty much the same because beforehand, the mechanic used to have a plow route and now with the re, with the re uh, invention of fleet maintenance, it's taken him out of the rotation. So we're basically we're, we're, we're taking one guy out and putting one guy in. So we're, we're not in, the only increase is that winter part-time guy. Which it helps with the sidewalks. Okay. That's the flow wise, it'll all stay the same. It'll all stay. stay. Right. At some At, ten, uh, ten, Go ahead. Right. I was going to say, have you advertised for a part time? For I've got two applications <laughs> out, and I'm um, hoping that, that Mr. Harvey's uh, part time guys across the street okay. will be interested. Mm -hmm. All right. I was thinking, too, um, I know Steve's got two part time employees at the transfer station, would it be possible for one or to switch to two part-time plowing, two part-time transfer station, maybe to share employees or no? The thing is, well, the only thing, Carrie, is that, you know, you never know when there's going to be a storm. Right. You know, and the other way that we are going to try to save money on that part-time position is that I know at least one of the, the, the one of the gentlemen over Paul's place and the gentleman that we have now, Dave Lewis, they kind of, you know, Dave's 75, 76 now, and he's kind of changed it where, you know, hey, when, uh, when, the, when, every, when the all clear is, is given, can I go home? Absolutely. Please, please do. And I know the guy that's working for Paul now, um, he would like that same setup, which is, is, is fun. And then George can take care of you know, just checking on them during the day and, and you know, taking care of any problem areas or phone calls that may come in for sidewalk plowing. So, thank you. But yeah, not knowing when there's going to be storms and and, and him and, and Steve, not, not, you know, their schedule, I, I don't know if that would work. I mean, we could try it for sure. But. Yeah, one of my guys is 69 with high blood pressure. <laughs> you probably don't want him. Yeah. And the other guy only really wants to work one day a week. And, yeah. yeah. Usually, if you get some. We're not time. committed to it. Right. That says it right there. Yeah. Okay. If you go to work part time somewhere, you've gone there because you only want to work part time. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right. Let's. Um, we are into an hour almost, so we have to keep moving here. So I think in terms of the admin budget and the highway budget, I think we've covered the main discussions on the positions. And again, there were some questions on the line items. I don't know if you wanted us to address those. There was, uh, there was a question about the overtime on the, uh, line. On page 58 and 59, you get cell phone yep. statement. It's almost $600. Uh, per the collective bargaining agreement, uh, the stipend is fifty dollars a month, so it'd be six hundred a year uh, per person. No, no, that Lori, that's it. Uh, the the only two, well, now three with Bruce. The only three that have twelve month coverage out of the year on the employee correct. side is us three: Ralph, myself, and Doug. And then between November and April. 
all of the other guys get a stipend, and I can't remember per the CBA what it is. Yeah, but they, yeah it's just for the winner on call. Just for the period. winner on call. Yep, so that's how it's budgeted yeah, that's right there, but the collective bargaining. So that's not going to go up or down unless it gets bargained within the uh, collective bargaining agreement. Correct. So for Ralph and Bill who are under the collective bargaining agreement, they get fifty dollars a month for twelve months. And the other positions get fifty dollars a month for the winter maintenance cycle, which is about five months. Uh, there was questions on our professional services uh, that we provide, or at least for that budget line. Um, I know this year we haven't had a lot. We have some uh, herbicide spraying going on uh, this week, but I just wanted to clarify that is a bit of a catch-all budget line because um, Bill and I talked about this a number of times, but uh, there's a lot of things that uh, come up depending on the situation of the year. We did clearing of the riverbank over um, on the Amonesic by the covered bridge last year, um, using professional services for that. Um, we'll occasionally bring in somebody to do rock crushing, material crushing out of the materials yard. We'll, uh, uh, this week we have a company coming out that is herbicide spraying that has all the permits uh, to do that work for the town. Uh, we started a program last year and want to continue, or the year before, to do uh, spraying of curbs to try to control the the weeds that are getting into the curb lines. Um, Bill, you had some other ones to add to that? Yeah, Maybe uh, in the winter time, snow removal. We have contractors that come in to help us with snow removal. That's going to come out of there. And also, if uh, we need to, we, we try to stockpile as much sand as we think we're going to need for the winter. But if it turns out to be an icy or hard winter, and it's only January and we're going to be running out and we've got to hire someone to start chucking in sand for us. If, you know, along with us, but if we're out piling snow or doing snow operations then and we need sand starting to get hauled, that's when that will come out of also. So there's a number of things that, and if, uh, if is especially with winter, it is if, if, if we have heavy snow and the demand is to keep Main Street spotless and we need to hire in contractors with the trucks along with our new two new ten wheelers um, to expedite and to get the side streets um, that's where that will come out of also it's not really a lot of money when you think of what we can, we will, would be spending on during the year between Summer, you know. Uh, fortunately, with the water and lights contract, or not contract, but with their crew now with Lucas Tree, they're readily available. But it gets, you know, we still got to pay for it. But I think we get a pretty good deal from them because they're already here in town. So you don't have a company that's traveling here in town. We just got to go through a few different hoops now that New England Tree Service is now owned by Lucas tree out of me. Mm. But they're right here in town. We've used them three times this year to take down trees that we if they're just out of our league. They just no way that we'd be able to safely take them down. So. And there's a lot of trees like that in town, right? Oh we just yeah. did one up at Remick Park. Yeah. Or they did. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big. Um, any other oh Bill, do you have a question? I didn't know you were looking you're leaning back. I thought you were gonna ask mm -hmm. a question. John? I, I, Go ahead. I don't hear well, so I like to read lips. Also, be careful between the lines because I'm going to be uh, spacing that way. Um, the street sweeper, I'm assuming, is going to be a separate warrant article, or is that okay? It is. Okay. Yep. And oftentimes it has to say this is a, you know recommended by the budget committee or not on these warrant articles. What are the options uh, if you know? So that's to. Purchase a sweet street sweeper, correct? It is, yep. And the um, the one we have is essentially long past its life. So what's the expected life on a new one? And I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to read through your original. Oh, okay, yeah, I got a fair amount of information in there. So um, 
I guess the first thing I wanted to point out is this attachment back here, which is a slide that I did for the deliberative session last year. Just so you can see what we put forth to the town residents for, uh, for supporting the sweep, street sweeper replacement. So it has some of the things that you're asking about. It's currently 19 years old. Um, I think, and then I also included our vehicle plan right behind it. Again, that was a plan I developed back in 2019 and I've been updating it. Um, and this one in particular, this is the newest version of it. I've, with uh, Bruce as our fleet mechanic, he's been able to sit down with this and really look at it with his expertise, especially as he's gotten to know the fleet over the last year to really help fine tune this plan. So this plan does represent the latest in terms of adjusting the schedule for anything. Um, so we did have the sweeper identified. So you'll see on the, you'll see on this chart here, the red, the green uh, items are the things that passed on warrant uh, for 20, 20 and 2021. And then the red is what didn't pass warrant, which is the sweeper. And so we've adjusted our vehicle plan. Again, it's a living, breathing document because as, as priorities change or as, say for example, Bruce comes on board and does a fresh look at it, that you know, if we have something that doesn't pass warrant, then we have to adjust the plan. Uh, so the big picture is, and what I, why I put this plan together was to show that the highway fleet definitely was falling behind its maintenance schedule and we needed to do what's called a catch-up cycle. So this is a, so we set, I set forth a three-year catch-up plan and that's what this plan is presented here, you know, updated. So it shows the uh, sweeper being, um, you know, shifted out to, to this year's uh, warrant. So that's just a bigger picture for you to understand, you know, what, uh, and it's basically our capital plan for the fleet. So this would, this represents what we would want to do going forward year by year to keep our fleet on a regular maintenance cycle. Uh, so the sweeper is designated for a 10 year, have 10 years? Do have it at 10 years? Well, seven year warranty, it says, so, sorry. We still value 10-year replacement cycle. Okay. Yeah, so we have a 10-year. Right, so 10-year replacement cycle is the ideal for a sweeper, and, and as all you guys know that deal with your own equipment or your own vehicles is, you know, the longer you hold on to it, the more money you put into it, and at some point you got to decide, you know, when's it, what's its market value, and when to when to trade it out and buy new. And everybody kind of has different opinions on what those thresholds are, you know, for your own personal equipment. So, so this here is a town's effort at laying that out and identifying a replacement cycle um, for all of our equipment. Uh, so the sweeper is at 10 year, ideally. Uh, so when I did the total cost of ownership analysis that I think somebody requested, I don't know who that was, but uh, I was able, to, uh, was able to put some work into that with Bruce and, and get that answered in terms of the total cost of ownership. That was based off a 10 year cycle. That is at the bottom just to jump ahead there. It's at the bottom of page four. So last year they got rejected. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Do you have a feeling and, and, why? And, and we're going to bring it forward again. Yeah. Why? That was. Why would a townsperson want to spend roughly four hundred thousand on a piece of equipment when we could spend roughly fifty thousand? And have somebody else come in and clean our streets. Well, that's that's really that's, that's that's going to yeah. be that's what people are going to want to know. Why am I going to spend this when I can get the same service? You're not going to get the same less. service. You won't get the same service. That's what we're going to try to explain. I think last year you yeah. explained that it was just a one-time deal for the fifty thousand, and whereas you, as a department, sweep the streets several times during the year and after storms that come through. Correct. So you need to kind of... Sure, yeah, let, let me just address that directly. Um, yeah, when we uh, talked to Avery last year and got budget numbers from them, yep. it was twice a year sweeping town-wide. So I believe catch basin cleaning, right, Bill? That didn't even include catch basin, I don't believe. Okay. Yes. I know it didn't. It didn't. Once a year catch basin cleaning. But it was, it was in the fifty to $60,000 range. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the scheduling um, 
especially when I mean, you guys can, you know, if there's a need in like the downtown area and early in the springtime, you get out like even this past year, I know you did my street in April and we're not waiting, you know, until June, July. Well, that's the thing. The other thing is Bruce made a phone call today and apparently Avery Sweetman is no longer in business. I talked with Mr. Avery earlier this summer asking about how his sweeping was doing because I knew that he was having problems finding help. And apparently now he's closed the sweeping end of his business and he is now solely running his his vacuum truck, a big sewer vacuum truck. What is so it? He's not, he's not even anywhere right, around him. He still has two sweepers that are going all the time. Avery does? Yep. Wow. I'm good friends with him. I know what's going on. And oh, okay. He does Twin Mountain. He does Whitefield. He does... Oh, all right. Maybe, Roger. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try to get a hold of him because the line was disconnected today. <coughs> yeah, his number shut That's, off and his website says permanently uh, closed. That's your herb. That's your herb. Bill? I'll try again tomorrow, Roger. Yeah. I'd like to ask some questions about the, the total cost of ownership. Mm -hmm. When you buy this piece of machinery, you have, probably have to have a place to store it. Do you have access to a, a building to, to store it in? We do. Yep. Okay. We currently own a sweeper. Pardon? We already own a sweeper. We already own a sweeper. Okay. That has a spot in our garage. So there, there is some annual maintenance. Uh, if I do my math correct, 708 hours is about 50% when you take the winter months out of the uh, equation with 2,080 hours of working hours in a year. Is 50% of the time, is, is that realistic? I don't know. I'm, I'm doing well, that's that's not the time the equipment is running. That's the labor to run the equipment. And so when we're catch basin cleaning, it's a two-man crew. Two to three. Two to three-man crew. So that's not the actual hour. That's the hours of labor, not the hours of... That's hours of labor for somebody to operate it? Correct. Well, why isn't that the hours that it runs? Because sometimes it's just sitting there parked, running as they clean catch basins. I don't think we can calculate how much time is actually on the equipment for it running. Well, we, we it's got mileage, but I don't think it has an hour. Should have an engine. Well, there's an engine hour on it. I thought that we had supplied that with the hours that we have on that. Because that's what I would hear. Okay. I would think that that would be the 708. Just, just like he's not 708 hours. No, those are man hours. Those are work order man hours. No, this is Between this is total cost of ownership, ownership analysis, which you have to look at labor costs. Not the amount of time the equipment runs. To say what I think you're saying in a different right. way. If you have three guys working on a catch basin job for one hour, that's counted as three hours in the 708. Correct. Because it's total man hours. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yep. That's catch basin cleaning. It's not like three hours or an hour. One of your people working on the machine. Probably 40 or 50 one, a day. One job out there yeah. that you said took multiple people. Right. So. And they catch basin cleaning, they sweeping, they vacuum excavation. They storm clean up, and there's other depart miscellaneous department needs that maybe other departments. What is the now that we have Bruce on on hand, and he's the fabulous. He takes care of the fleet. Um, what is the expected lifespan of a sweeper? Is there an expected lifespan for four hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> It's, it's actually, no, it's yeah. 200, 200 no, the, and the unit that we're looking at in the, in the top, total TCO analysis I did, Bruce was actually looking at a particular sweeper. So it's a Johnson sweeper. It's, they have a price of $255,000. $255,000. Yeah. What is the projected lifespan on a sweeper? How many years would that get us? Well, a lot has to do with the preventive maintenance, of course, but right. um, it's projected to be, you know, to to have something with some equity and in good running operation for a trade in to an upgrade down the road, 10 years is realistic. You can keep it much longer, like the one we have now is 20, 20, 20, 21 years old. And the reason the hours they came up with for the 708 was basically out the last three years. And that's because the machine wasn't dependable enough to run more than normal. When it was newer, as I understand, they were using it a lot more going out at nights, doing Main Street parking lots, 
a lot more cleaning, they could use it more often. And the, the last three years up until this point, it wasn't um, um, being used to its fullest capacity. Fullest capacity because it wasn't reliable enough. So it's get, definitely got a little better this year with the time and the amount of work we put into it. But uh, it, we definitely get used more hours during the summer, spring, summer, fall hours for clean up storms, leaves, that kind of stuff. But it, it's heavy in all the last three years because it hasn't been dependable enough to keep it running with the breakdowns and so forth. So that would essentially be 25000 a year, basically. And then you also have your operating expenses listed in there as average of 6000 um, And then um, that's for the maintenance parts and labor. And then 15000 for um, the 708 hours of operating labor. That's what you have as in here. So that's almost the $50,000. 50, I think last year we were comparing what the $50,000 actually got us, um, you know, how, not only what they cleaned and, you know, the catch basins and, you know, the sweeping, but were we paying for labor? Were we paying for health insurance? Were we paying if that? basically gets rolled into the fee anyways from any company. Right. So the thing the thing is that when we have the machine at our leisure we can do it more often than on our time frame. With them there was only a certain time of the year that they could fit us into a slot to do any kind of work for the town. So, and you're, you, so you're very limited. If you had a storm or right. a bad mess you it would have to be that way until they get around to have an opening slot. This way happening you can we, somebody can go out and do it more often than time. We, uh, we all know <clears throat> the sensitivity that we have with Partridge Lake also. And it's a big push in the spring for us to get out there and get cleaned up around the lake. You cannot push that sand into the ditch lines out there. You can't. You just can't. They're not going to allow it. So as soon as those roads out there are able to support that machine, that's probably the first place it goes is out there. And if anybody else wants to answer the Partridge Lake phone calls when they come in, I'll be more than <laughs> <laughs> So it's kind of like one of these deals. Like We've had one in this town since 1953. Yeah. And I don't know why there's such a push or question of why the town doesn't. It's more concentration on why we don't need it than why we do. And if you take a walk down through Main Street now, just look along the side of the gutters. Look down by Dunkin' Donuts. It's a whole freaking pigsty. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get the sweeper out. We will. And we'll sweep up the gutters, you know, as this month starts to wind down. And we'll get things cleaned up before winter because we want to go clean the leaves up along the edges. Because those get to the catch basins. When the catch basins get full, then they don't drain water properly. So there's a, there's a whole cycle of events that happen. When you that you can prevent when you have your own equipment to maintain. That's what we're here is to maintain. Right. So flexibility is our biggest argument. Bill, I have one more question. I'll lean back where I can see you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> have you used contract services for sweepers, or, or have you always done it yourself? This we've always had one in town for the 23 years I've been here. Okay, so you have not used outside contractors we haven't had the need to you have not no okay so I, I guess the other thing that that Dan pointed out last year is that we are a tourist community and I don't know if Dan wants to <laughs> talk about yeah. that about the cleanliness of our town as a tourist community so there is about that value too so yeah, and yeah well <laughs> exactly and and what Bill I mean I was out walking last night and down by Dunkin Donuts and I noticed the trash and you know uh, cups and whatnot and I thought gee you know and I was thinking street sweeper because I mean anywhere that you go for uh, a vacation which is a tourist town they're very particular about keeping their streets clean and tidy and we are one of those towns and I think it's imperative that we we continue the terrific job of, of maintaining clean streets. And also, I think our neighborhoods, um, as I know in the springtime when it's time you're thinking windows, 
um, I don't want to have my windows done and then in June or July uh, a contract sweeper comes by storing up all that dust and, and plus the fact that you have to deal with all of the, the sand on the sides of the roads and streets and also uh, in the springtime myself and a lot of others are anxious to go out and, and, and do jogging and uh, it's very hazardous when you've got all kinds of sand uh, on the sides of the, of the roads so um, I applaud uh, the highway department for their quick and speedy efforts of cleaning up the, the, the roads in town so that joggers and bikers and whatnot can go out and, and do their thing without having to worry about uh, taking a spill on some sand. So this all plays into the quality of life and, and why we pay taxes and what we expect from a community versus a more rural area where you have dirt roads and you don't have uh, some of the luxuries of, of clean uh, streets uh, because uh, you live outside and, and we're, we're a small town and, and we become accustomed to that service and I think you know it would be good that we continue along that line for, for our quality of life and for, the, for our visitors as well. In, in, in regards to the contracting out, um, we would still, as the highway department, still have to supply labor for the catch basins. You know, you got four or five hundred catch basins, you're going to still need someone. That driver, all he's going to do is operate that machine. That's all he's going to do. And I'm going to still need to send two people out to, to go with that machine. When he sweeps, I'm still going to have to send maybe one, maybe two trucks so he can dump into. So we're still providing labor. No matter what. The contractor isn't $50,000 a year and that's it. You still get our labor on top. Right, so the $15,000 that you have um, operation cost two or whatever that um, Diane was referencing yeah. is still going to be there. 10000 to 12000 of that is still going to be there. You know, a large portion of it is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Since I have the floor, my questions and pushing back on it is not my disagreement with it. It's if we're going to give, you know, for me to give my recommendation, so to speak, I have to know what the other options were. And, Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely why we're here. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. we are at 20 minutes after, and the only reason why I am saying that is that there, people, there, this room is also rented out at six o'clock, and we have to break down the tables and things like that. So, um, if you have any other questions on this, do you have any other questions? I have a few questions, Lori. On this sheet right here that you handed out for the expense, the totals by department. So we have on the <coughs> public works for the, let's see if I can get, the administration. We are, uh, the, the 2021 budget was 77,000 and the proposed 2022 budget is 173,000. That's $100,000 more. And is that because we transferred one position over into the other. It's actually a couple of things. Okay. So it is, when you take all the departments together and add them up, which is what I did quick, so I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> it's overall uh, $96,108 more. Okay. But um, there was a change in the sewer, indirect cost, the way I did it this year. There's an extra sheet that's in the sewer. It shows that for these. Public Works Administration, 33% of that budget is reimbursed from the sewer department, okay? On the highway part, 5% of that budget, uh, the 43-12 section, 5% of that is reimbursed from the sewer. And on the 43-13 section, which is the new town building maintenance um, section, 50% uh, of that budget is reimbursed from the sewer enterprise fund. So that adds to this huge difference from last year to this year. Why is it so big? It's not really that big. So, I, yeah, I did, and, and also, I mean, the only new thing I think is the new position for twenty-five thousand that was sort of built in there. But um, it really only comes down to there's also thirteen thousand from the town hall buildings that the town manager reduced in order to put into this new town building maintenance. So it's a shifting. It's shifting, yeah. I just want to point out that it's yes, shifting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping to get a chance to explain that. 
Okay, and uh, let's see, what else is there on that? Oh, so in these numbers, um, I think there is a new contract being negotiated, so does this reflect any salary increases? It's just status quo? Yeah, 3% So you, you put 3% in to, right. for just for budgeting purposes. Budgeting purposes so because sometimes they don't put anything in, so I, I'm not quite sure if, you know where we stood on that. Yeah, usually they put 3% in on non-union positions that put right. zero on contract positions. But you're saying this year you have 3% on all positions. Yeah. Okay. And that includes also the increase in the retirement fund and everything else okay yeah all right are there any other questions on this department uh, is there anything else that you want to add as <coughs> far as state to this I, I was actually I was just kind of curious about why you think the sweeper did not pass last year well that's a good question well we thought possibly you know with the the fire engine being on warrant yeah could have been you know, seen as a higher priority easy to pick up fires engine over a sweeper. The, just Bill, any other yeah, no, you're, you're spot on. Yeah. Okay. I think that's uh, the main reason. And I, I, other than that, like I said, I don't know why. I, other than they could be some backdoor lobbying against it. So, so the sweeper will be a standalone warrant article. And I'm also looking at your five-year capital plan, not the one that you handed out, but the one that Laurie had in our handout. Mm -hmm. And it also shows that um, for the highway department, a plow truck number two, is that, is that something that's going to come okay. forward? We have two other, we have a 10-wheeler, again, going back to the vehicle plan, okay. which I think is correct for this year for 20 it's probably got some differences from Lori's because this is a real recent update to it but I think for 2022 that it's correct we got the sweeper a third 10 wheeler and a one and a half ton um, plow truck okay do we have any questions on that gentlemen or do you want them to come back with more information on that on, on the other Warren articles. Are, are we going to review Warren articles separate from the expense? Yes, the okay. Warren articles will be given to the board of selectmen first to go over and decide which ones to go forward on. And once Perfect. They decided, then it goes to the budget. I think that's great because not that we rubber stamp what you ask um, but it, it is also nice to have some sense of cap on what you want your budget to be and, and last year uh, we didn't necessarily rubber stamp what you wanted we added I think for the pool at the very last minute and, and other items but it is I commend you for at least having some kind of ballpark figure and bringing that to because in previous years we've had just a carte blanche of things and you know we we're trying to figure it all out and it just got too confusing so thank you I appreciate that so we'll hear about those later on right okay. so the document you see what the departments requested mm -hmm. so they're plugged into the capital plan but that's why they say estimate because it's until the course approves what needs to go forward Okay, sounds good. Did you have a question, Steve? Uh, two questions. One well, quick one, Bill. The 10 wheelers continue to work out well? Yes, absolutely. We move. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I resale value on those when we get ready to turn them around. But operation. so, operationalized. Operationalized. I, I haven't had two happier truck drivers. Yeah. And they, the hardest sell was Ralph Lucas. He was bound to determine that that wasn't going to be the way to go. And by golly, by the time winter got done with he had changed his mind. And the thing you mentioned pool, yeah. hopefully we have a plan for the pool. I mean, this town, I mean, you know, if there's a department that continuously gets high and whatever, you, would, you know, it's the right department and, and not having uh, a good functioning pool for the kids and little communities. 
Caitlin, sure. Caitlin's done a tremendous amount of research and has investigated a lot to go. In fact, she has even looked into a professional mm -hmm. or school okay. company. Uh, and she's chat. gathering up um, uh, uh, what she needs to. Position, it, it may not happen this coming year, obviously, because of so much work to do, but I think she's shooting in 2023. We kind of got blindsided by the leap this year. Yeah. 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 Are we shooting to the <laughs> open in 2022, though, one way or the other? Yeah. I remember, I mean, obviously, at some point in time, this town needs to make a commitment. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I know it's a big one. There's but, not, well, yes, or other. There's an argument to be made. It should be like a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was disappointing this year because of the leak. Yeah. And we're thinking, well, we'll get away with it or whatever. But one of the neighbors ended up with water in their basement, tracking mm -hmm. it back to the pool. That's where we should. That's too bad. Okay, so we have yeah. wastewater yeah. treatment plan and the maintenance. Town um, building maintenance. Town building maintenance. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Oh, well, we had that. Yeah. yeah. They went up from 300 to 500. Yeah. Okay. Which is good. Okay. Yeah. Which we need that. Okay. All right. Who is going to. Doug, are you. I am. For, presenting? For sewer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What page is that on? Uh, town building maintenance. Do you want to do town building maintenance? Sure. Oh, okay. Whichever one. Building we have town, town building, building maintenance. Building maintenance that, and the sewer. The sewer so we have page 62 <coughs> and 63. Yeah. Who would like to present that? Sure. That? Yep, I will be presenting it. If you go to page 62 in your packet. Um, yep. There was a question that came up about a about this being a new position. I missed the fact that it said new permanent position. So if that is correct, it is a new permanent position um, in terms of building maintenance. But in terms of its the position's responsibility, it's still offering the same part-time uh, level of building maintenance that the town has had uh, with the previous um, employee that retired. But anyways, from a budgeting standpoint, this is a new budget division under Public Works. Um, when I started with the town, I wasn't involved with buildings at all, so that, uh, that a change occurred working under Andrew uh, to have me lead over building maintenance. Um, so the goal was to uh, shift funds from other departments. Since we already had budgeted money for part-time building maintenance, uh, the goal was, as Lori has mentioned, is shifting um, to um, help cover that position now that it's under its own separate uh, budget category. Um, but the position was set up to be split between 50% to the sewer fund uh, related to the industrial pretreatment program, and then 50% to uh, the general fund. And we're talking about the maintaining what programs? <clears throat> uh, they are working on the opera house, the town office, uh, police station, fire station, uh, library, um, uh, Renwick Park, or whatever Caitlin might need under parks, the gazebo project they've been involved in. Highway? Um, highway not so much, but with being a new building, it hasn't really needed a lot of, but other than checking in, making sure things are uh, in order there, checking all the buildings for safe exiting and fire extinguishers and uh, 
fire alarm systems and just overall building. They're going around and doing regular checks of the buildings. And this is this actually is an improved function. Um, a previous part-time person worked mobile and just came and went as needed and worked out of their car and and worked on whatever assigned projects were given to them by the town. So this is a little bit more structured building maintenance uh, effort um, for this position. So they're. We, we are just estimating about 20 hours a week they're, they're putting the building maintenance. Um, and then another 20 hours a week towards sewer and the uh, industrial pretreatment program. <coughs> and what kind of experience does this person have? Well, I would say we had a very fortunate recruitment. We found a gentleman um, um, <coughs> out of St. Johnsbury who uh, worked um, doing building maintenance for uh, Scales, Scales company over there. I'm drawing a blank on the name right now. Fairbanks. 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 Had quite a few years of experience doing building maintenance for Fairbanks. But he also handled a lot of their environmental uh, aspects for their company too, for some sites that they manage for cleanup and that kind of stuff. So he actually had a pretty decent understanding of the environmental aspect. So it was a really good combination to find this gentleman and and, and he accepted a position with us, and he's been on board since uh, May. I've always felt that on the school side, and now I'm seeing it on the town side, the maintenance of our buildings, um, you know, you, you have a fire chief, you have a police chief, you have an office manager, you have whomever. They do not have the experience of maintaining a building or even knowing what to do or look for. And it goes as well for even the parking lots. If you're on the Library Board of Trustees, does not mean you know anything about what a parking lot or how to even go out and place a bid and how to, how to do all of that. So when we have someone basically taking care of all of these, um, you're, you're helping with the parking lots around mm -hmm. our buildings and things like that. So it's great because the people that are on the boards really do not have that experience. And then things get behind. Well, the library is a good example. They have a very laid out plan for what the library mm -hmm. needs for, for building maintenance needs, but nobody's really tracking it and, and seeing to get those things you know followed through on. So he's been working with the library on that. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's very similar to Bruce, he's very qualified as a carpenter and so he's doing projects, he's doing a roof repair project for the fire department that they normally have to hire out. And, uh, so he can take on stuff in house, he's helping with the gazebo project for Caitlin and helping me with the barn demolition and the Jack's Jr. parking lot. And so it's, uh, it's worked out really, he's got a good balance of technical skills and, and some of that environmental background that's needed for the sewer side of his job description. Um, because we're short on time, do we have any questions on this? And then we have the, uh, the transfer sewer. sewer. Yeah, sewer. <laughs> we have to do any questions on maintenance. Yeah. You can okay, always okay, ask wait, later. Is, there any, yeah. um, is it possible to combine the school with the municipal buildings for this kind of maintenance? Because um, it seems like the school has their staff for their three or four buildings, maybe five. And then now the town has its small staff, and I've never seen things shrink once they start. It's oh, well, let's add and let's add. So, is there any way that there could be some overlap there, or it's too separate? You know, it needs to stay separated. I think um, the school is trying to develop a maintenance department on that. So that's a good question that when they come, you know, to, to ask because I think Dale Pryor is trying to, to and Henry Want are trying to go through this, the school buildings and look at the maintenance issues and, and keep them going. But, the, you know, that's a good question when we, when we meet with them as well. And I, right, that's kind yeah. of beyond me for, in terms of a partner, it'd be a partnership yeah, partnership, or anything with the school. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm essentially asking. Yeah. yeah. I'm new to this process, right. so, you know, sorry for my ignorance, but. No, that's all right. Is there any, it's a good you know, question. Is that, feasible from or is that two separate budgets two separate, separate budget two very separate things so never to the two never the two shall mix kind of thing well i mean it would have to be closely monitored on 
how much time is divided, and you know, and funded. So, yeah. That was my only question. All right. What do we have next, Lori? Sewer? I never can remember what they're called. The section five, section you know, the sewer, yeah, sub, the sub five, sub five, sub areas. Sub areas. Sub sub areas. Five. There you yeah. go. We'll sub get all the five. words together. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we on those projects? Well, the sub area five project was yeah. under construction when I started. So that project is wrapped up. Um, that was Union Street, right? That was Union and Pine and Chiswick. Chiswick, yeah. Um, the sub area two project was the next one in the queue and it went to warrant that um, the town's not been able to secure the match funding that was specified in that warrant. That's my understanding. Which is the rock screen area? Mm -hmm. Current mm -hmm. spend enough. So, so ah. the blurry can, I don't know if that, those monies are so authorized and set aside, mm -hmm. but. Uh, if there's, there's a time a, period on that, I, I, it's probably more of a Lori question than that. But. I think there's actually FEMA money for that. I, I really have to do my homework. There is there is some st to prevent, it's more like a proactive instead of a reactive funding from FEMA on, on these mm. types of projects. And they, have, they were just awarded a lot of money for this type of project. I need to give you that information. Sure, yeah, if you could pass that along, and I'd be appreciated. And whether you can use it or not use it, you would understand that better than I. So right. um, I, will, I will send that to you because it is for a wastewater treatment projects. Projects, okay. So. Yeah, and we're working closely with NCIC as our grant uh, you know, supporter for the town, so uh, I could get that information to them. They're, they're good to get eyes on to that stuff and right. help advise us on how we would I will send that to you. I have the document and I'll send that to you. Okay. So, any other questions on this? Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, there's sewer sewage fees, correct? Correct. Um, usage fees. Is there any it reason we're not shooting the same question as I asked him? Is there any reason in this one they're not gonna go start dumping on the side <laughs> of the road? So, <laughs> is there any reason we're not shooting for zero tax impact and have it supported by fees? It is zero tax impact. And then how's, yeah. about the, the how's that for an answer for you? It runs as an enterprise fund, so it still has a budget, and so you still have to look at it and prove it, but it is fully funded by user fees. Oh, so okay. user fees With even a reserve a a amount. Process. So we, we, yeah. the select board authorized $1.3 million for an emergency repair project, but it's actually coming out of reserve funds, so there's no tax impact. Any word on the pumps? They've been ordered. Right, but no... And we're getting, no, we're getting the, um, yeah, I, I'd have to look back. I don't know the exact date, Roger, but we had a date that we got the contract signed with them and officially in the queue. I think they said 16 week lead time on those, so that's, you know, four months. I had an interesting conversation with a guy that installed the pumps that have now run out of the fail mm -hmm. many years ago. Yeah, about lasted their, what they're expected. Yeah, they got about a 20 year useful life, so we had these screw pumps, or our main lifting pumps at the treatment plant. That, you know, one of them's failed, the other one is hanging in there, but they're about the same age. And they're 30, 31? Right 31, 32 years old, Roger, is that right? I think he said and it was uh, over 30 years ago that he put them in. Yep. Wow. So they, they went beyond their useful life. We did. He said we got our money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did get our money's worth. Yeah. That's called running it into the ground. 
Let him, <laughs> let him get into the sewage. But anyways, we were in a critical phase though to get them replaced and and moving quickly to get an emergency project in place. But it takes time. So yeah, and we're also working on the engineered plans for that that will support the permit application to DES. To get those pumps uh, installed, we'll have to put them out to bid for a contractor to install them. So, so the that'll be put together. Failing is the screen. The the bar rack also bar failed. Rack. Yep, and so we're getting that specced and ready to be ordered as well. Which that's just going to be replaced as a new bar rack. Same thing. It's actually going to be a better one. It'll do a better job of screening out materials. And not this guy the, built the bar rack that I was talking. It's just hang a line of steel and. Right. This is an actual manufactured, uh, engineered product that we're going to be putting in. Okay. The state actually has standards for those, so what we have doesn't meet state standards in terms of the amount of screening that it can do. Yeah. And so the new one will. And we're also getting a better system for all that material that is getting screened to be managed and pulled out of there, and so it's not an extra burden. So it's an upgrade on the system. Correct. It is an upgrade in terms of reducing the grit that goes into the into the plant. Right. Uh, but I am proposing a project uh, or, that I kind of expanded. It might want to take some time and read it in my response to that. There was a question about this particular project that I put in the fund as a capital project. Um, and again, this has been talked about a bit with the uh, select board over the years, but uh, we have a uh, our current system is a centrifuge for dewatering uh, the uh, solids. And uh, we also currently have a, a fairly nominal septage receiving station. Uh, the town does receive revenue from septage. And so that is another one of the revenue sources that is uh, a good opportunity out there. And the treatment plant has offered septage receiving. We're currently not because of the issues going on at the plant. but. Um, but for example, St. Johnsbury uh, has done upgrades to their plant over there. And so they, from what I understand, they basically have unlimited septage receiving. They don't have any limits on it. Um, they have the ability to process it. And, and since that is a revenue source, if we can do upgrades to the plant to, to accomplish something at that level, you know, that's what our long-term goal is, is to be able to maximize revenue from septage. So that's what this, this project here that I put together was and then, then the centrifuge also is another uh, device at the plant that's had some issues and is due for replacement. Um, and what the town has to do is have all the, the, way, the solids hauled off. And right now it's going to Bethlehem. It gets back into the solid waste uh, discussion of where it's going to go. But currently we have a contract for that to be hauled by the ton to, to Bethlehem. So if that were to ever change and then we had to haul farther or whatever, it's going to be huge cost to the sewer fund for this for the sludge. Is that the one dug that um, spins so fast it actually makes it into pellets? It can be used just for... No, that's, that's what this project is, is to upgrade. Okay. So we're looking to upgrade our um, dewatering. It's called a dewatering system, just to use a simple term. We're looking to upgrade to a better dewatering system that gets us almost to a dry pellet, to a product that even if we did have to haul it to a landfill, it would be much lighter and, and we could haul a lot more in a single load and a lot, a lot of cost savings there. Mm -hmm. it, may have, it may have a market value, possibly. We're paying to get rid of water. Yeah, we are paying to get rid of water. We can, mm -hmm. we can do water to about 15%. And this dryer system would get us to closer to 80 to 90% dry material. So, so that, that's a potential Warren article? So that's a potential Warren article that I, I was setting forth for this year's. And again, it's just to, to set forth the project so that we can set it up for a grant opportunity and already have a town approval on a warrant project to, to support that. And then we'd be looking for grant opportunities to, mm -hmm. to pursue it. Anything else, people? Here, we just have... Well, we, we have one we have right a couple. housekeeping. Yeah, right. just a couple yeah. housekeeping for... Um, the budget committee. And I'll okay. turn it over to okay. Dan. Um, we have a, uh, a, a uh, conflict of interest policy for the town, and we have two new members, uh, John and Bill. So, Lori, if you could uh, forward to them by email um, the documents and policy, and they can get that back to you, I guess. I, I, unless anything 
has changed among the other Anyone members. Else? We signed. We actually all signed a uh, conflict of interest policy document last year, and we have two new members here. So <coughs> unless we have had any changes in our lives that we may have another new conflict of interest, um, I don't think disclosed. we need to. But yeah, that needs to be disclosed. And we don't. The, the older members do not have to to do that. You just have one on file. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm fine. Yeah. But but okay. Yeah. But we do need two for our new members. Right. We know that. So thanks. And the the other thing too, we um, the retirement system. I did follow up. I I said that I had contact with uh, on the webinar, and was asking about the retirement system, and I will be sending a lot of documents <laughs> to you in a little bit but um, the, I did receive um, a phone call from uh, Mr. Worley I believe and they are interested in, in taking our questions and having a discussion uh, explaining how the New Hampshire retirement system is working how the investments work or, or what they're doing with that um, they can either do it via Zoom or they would actually physically come here and ask uh, and have a presentation. So we, we can talk more about that uh, next week, um, but I will send you all the documents that he sent me. Um, they just came out with, um, like once a year they come out with um, the annual report on you know their investments for the retirement system and that is fresh off the press and so I'll send that to you um, so look forward to that so so possibly we could actually have somebody from yes yes and I, I the question would be to me and I want you to, to think about it is how do we want them physically to come here I want you to actually look at the information first um, and I can also send the webinar so you can actually hear about the the um, how they the downshifting of cost on municipalities that the state has done and then also the retirement fund um, so we can invite others if we want like this the school board or we can invite other communities if we would like to or we can just keep it simple and do a, a, a zoom meeting with them so give it some thought on after you look at the information and uh, we'll discuss it next week does that sound good? Okay. Yeah. And that's who we are. We're here. Yeah. We are definitely here. So that is it. Unless someone else has something. Do you? I okay. just had a question as to what other departments you might want to have come. We're having police and fire for sure the next two meetings. After that, I wasn't sure if you want to park and rack. Yes, definitely park and rack. Um, I think welfare, yes, yes, okay, so and human resource. I think we probably, yeah. but a lot of them can be combined, combined. right? Yeah. And yeah. So, so the next meeting, what budget are we going to cover? Is it going to be police? police? Police. Okay. The the other thing too. Um, that I would like to go over are the revenues because those can go up and down and that can be combined with one of the other departments but um, that that's really critical yeah. what revenues that we're receiving from the state are they still on target because we've had such an unusual couple of years um, yes, how they go week, yeah they actually come in around this time of year October November is when mm -hmm. It used to be forty percent came back to the to the municipal uh, yeah. municipality and now it's only like twenty two percent or something. Yeah. yeah. That's in this webinar <laughs> that I am sending you. So um, I guess that's it. Roger, did you have anything? No. Okay. Uh, all the conversations have been in the papers over the last few months.
regards to our audit situation. I think it's sometimes you have a little summary of what we are. Any other questions? Board meeting, I'm sure. At the select board meeting, I'm sure they'll be talking about it October 25th. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if everyone could help me with the tables and the chairs.